What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your Wheeltop Ox 2.0 rear derailleur. The first step is to install your rear derailleur with a 5mm Allen key. Next you'll install your shifter onto the handlebar using a 4mm Allen key. You will have to remove your grip to be able to slide the shifter on. The next step, we will replicate what SRAM does with their Eagle Axis setup to get our chain length. And the way you do that is you take your chain and you will wrap it around the large cog and also the chain ring. During this setup, you do want to have your rear shock uh, compressed at about 20%. That's usually uh, the length that this is the longest, or you can actually measure it yourself. What I found though is if I just set it to about 25%, let the air out of the rear shock, let it compress, and that way you will set it up uh, with a full suspension. Now with a, a hardtail, you do not have to do that, uh, obviously. So what you do is you take your chain, you'll run your chain through your, onto your largest cog of your cassette and then also around the chain ring and what you do here is you actually want your chain to overlap by four total links or as SRAM says uh, it will be two inner links and two outer links so the way you can look at that is that's an outer link that's an outer link that's an inner link that's an inner link so you want to have it where you have your four links. Now, right now my suspension is not fully compressed there. So obviously it's showing uh, just about three links. When I do compress it, it will have actually four links showing. And when you do cut your chain, which you're gonna use a chain tool, like so, if you have one of these or there's several more out there uh, to cut your chain. And when you cut your chain, you wanna make sure that you have it where it's two inner links like this at the end that way your master link will connect so here's our master link here this is why you have to have the two inner links because the master links basically create another outer link so now that we have our chain cut and ready to go this one obviously i've already cut it you will route the chain through the pulley and connect it with the master link Make sure that your chain is not getting caught up on the guide here and that it actually does clear because sometimes you may accidentally route the chain around the guide and then when you're riding you'll hear it just clicking the whole time. All right, we've got our master link here. And you want to rotate your crank around until your master link shows up here. And then you can just push, hold your brake and push on your crank and it'll tighten that master link. Just make sure your master link is engaged properly. Otherwise this will pop off while you're riding. Now we have our chain installed. We're gonna shift all the way up to the largest cog here. And at this point you wanna shift pretty slowly because what we're limiting now is we're going to limit or adjust our high limit screw. And our high limit screw, this is the screw that determines how far your pulley is allowed to go inboard towards the spokes. Obviously we don't want it to go too far because then it's going to derail the chain into the spokes and we don't want it to limit it too much because then it won't allow it into the largest cog here. So what you're going to do is you're going to use right in here a two millimeter allen key into that there. If you screw it in it's going to push the upper pulley inboard. If you unscrew it, it's going to pull the upper pulley outboard. So you're going to want to set it where it is lined up perfectly with this largest cog here. Now I already have mine lined up perfectly, but I will show you what happens if I do, right now I'm unscrewing it, it's not going anywhere, but if I screw it inboard, you see it's actually moving this pulley inboard. I don't want that. I want it to make sure that it can get up on that largest cog. So now it's in the proper location. You want to spin it around, make sure it's staying there. As you see here, as I'm spinning it, if I screw it inboard, now I've limited where it will not get to that largest cog. 
So obviously we don't want to do that. So I'm going to go unscrew this and allow it into that, that largest cog there and boom, it's good. We're good to go. Now that we have our high limit set, now we have to go down and set our low limit. To adjust the low limit screw, it is actually behind this cover here, which you'll need a 1.5 millimeter Allen key to remove this cover. All right, we're gonna move under the derailleur here to be able to get to that screw. You can see it right there. So we've got a 1.5 millimeter Allen key here. Be careful with this screw, it is very small. You do not want to strip it, so make sure you have a good 1.5 millimeter Allen key that you can remove this small screw. It also has a small O-ring that should come off with it. There it is right there at the top. So you got that small O-ring. You want to keep that. It keeps everything sealed. Now that we have the screw removed, you actually take the cover and slide it forward to remove, kind of wiggle it a little bit and slide forward, and it will be removed there. Now you can see the low limit screw located right here. This is will take a two millimeter Allen key as well. And we're gonna shift down to the smallest cog, which in this cassette is gonna be a 10 tooth. Now we are in the 10 tooth. And what this will do is this screw will tell the upper pulley how far outboard or inboard it's gonna go, similar to the high limit screw. So it's going to use a two millimeter here and screw it in, pushes the pulley inboard, screw it out, pulls the pulley outboard. This part is critical on the setup of the Wheeltop Ox 2.0 because the way the you initially calibrate the rear derailleur to know where it is located is by this smaller cog. And you have to set your limit screw here, your low limit screw, to be right on the tin tooth. And I'll show you here how you adjust it. Once again, if you screw inboard you're going to see this upper pulley here move inboard all right you should be seeing it move inboard now that's going to be too far as you see here if i'm spinning the gears it's not actually coming down to that tin tooth so what you want to do move it outboard you can do it while spinning the cranks if you want to and there it's slowly moved into place and you don't want to go too far because if you go too far outboard it will derail you the chain and move it off that cog. So now that we have our tin tooth set and everything's ready to go, what we do now is we want to go to our shifter. And what you'll do is if you look on the back, you have a button right here. All right. And this button, you will press it and hold it. And you'll see the green light come on. And after about five seconds, the green light will go off. What well, that means, you're in now micro adjust mode. And it also is what told the rear derailleur that this is the smallest cog. Now that we are in micro shift mode or micro adjust mode, you can see as I click the buttons, you'll see in here the rear derailleur move ever so slightly. So what you're going to do is you're setting it up where this will stay in that tin tooth. I'm going to shift up. See now that's too far. I'm no longer in that smallest cog. I'm in the 11th gear. So we have to make it where the rear derailleur knows that we're in the 10th gear on micro adjust. So now that I've gone too far, I'm going to shift down until it gets micro adjusted down to the 10 tooth. Now we're in that position. What you'll do is you'll return to your shifter and then you will hold down that same button and a green light will come on. You hold it down for about five seconds or so and then the button will go off and then you are ready to shift. All right, now we can shift through our gears. And like I said before, with wheel top, it is set for 12 speeds. It could work perfectly with your cassette. It may not work perfectly with your cassette. This one, obviously, I've already fine-tuned, and it's ready to go. Let's go to the app in case you run into an issue where, yes, you can shift through these gears okay, but you have a couple gears where it's not shifting. Then I'll show you how to use the app. So you're going to download the app. Uh, this is the wheel top app right here on Android. And you can see here that we're going to add a device. So... If you look up here at the top, I've already paired this one before, but you can see a little Bluetooth symbol right there. Click that. It's searching for devices. If you haven't moved your device, you want to move it a little bit to make sure that it will actually connect. All 
All right, so here we are. And uh, as you see here, my battery life is about 40%. I have been running it in competitive mode. So if you wanna switch it from uh, competitive mode to casual mode, you can. That will give you more shifts. Obviously, the shift speed will be a little slower. I'm moving it back to the competitive mode. And what we're gonna do is down here at the bottom, you see a little cog. Click on the cog there. This is where you have all the different settings. And you can do things like check your firmware, you can device shutdown, all those things. We're not gonna go into great detail on that, but you can do that. What you wanna do is go to equipment debugging. If we're talking about doing a, um, you know, fine tuning the gear, you can see here as fine tuning, replace cassette. If you go here, you can change it from anywhere from a three speed to a 12 speed. Initial calibration, that's what we've already done. When we set up the smallest cog here, we did the initial calibration there. So, and gear shift is just where you can shift it from your phone. Now we're gonna to go to the fine tuning. As you see here, it just says if you go outside the limits, you could damage your, your rear derailleur. And as you see here, it gives each gear a value. Now, so let's say, let's go to um, the, the, the 12th gear here, the big, big ring, and uh, I'll show you what will happen and how you can fine tune it. Okay, so now we're in the, uh, the, the 12th gear. If you click on the 12th gear, you can see I have the value now at 1520. You can click on that and actually just type a new value in if you want to, that's an option. Uh, or you can move the up and down arrows, the plus or minus arrows to change it. I wanna change it to something crazy. Right now 1520 works really well. So let's move it to uh, 1480 just, just to show you uh, an example. Now, as a heads up, right now I put 1480 but that does not change anything right now, okay? So this still is in the 1520 position, all right? So it still looks good. The way you initiate and move it to the new position is you have to shift out of the gear and then shift back into the gear. So I'm in 1480, and you see it clicking a little bit. It's still, it actually worked, but it's still not working great. So let's move it to something a little more extreme. Let's go down to, let's say a 1460 to make it where it shifts bad. Once again, it's still in 1480, shift out of the gear and then shift back in. You see there, it's not, it's not wanting to get into that 12th gear. So you may run into this issue. If you run into this issue, obviously you open the app, you go to the fine tuning location here, and then you will play with that. So once again, we're gonna go back to the 12th gear here. We know already 1520 works for us with our setup. So just delete that, type in 1520, click sure. Sure means yes on the app. And then from there, once again, it's still stuck in that 16 or 1460. So we got to shift out of the 12th gear and then shift back into it and it shifts perfectly. So just understand that if you're in the gear and you adjust it and then it's not doing anything for you, that's because you have to shift out of the gear and then back into the gear. One last setup I want to make note of is what's called the B screw. This is the screw right here. This is a uh, three millimeter. And what it does is if you screw it in, it will make the upper pulley move down, and if you unscrew it, it'll make the upper pulley go into the cassette. So the way you wanna set this distance is I actually use the SRAM method, which they have a tool that you can use. Another trick is, and with a five millimeter Allen key, what you do is you go into your 11th gear right there, and all you're doing with this, you're, you want this upper pulley to be as close as possible to the gears, but not too close where it runs into them. So if you take your B screw, I'll show you an example here. I screw it out. You can kind of see the upper pulley moving upwards into the cocks. You don't want it to be too close like it is now. So what you do is you put it into the 11 tooth there. And then you're gonna, you can actually use just like this. This is a five millimeter Allen key. And you want the gap to be between this tooth and the pulley to be about that much distance right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw in. And what helps too with this, if you want, it doesn't put as much stress on your B-screw, you can release it, screw it in a little bit there. I do that with all of my rear derailleurs actually, so I don't put too much stress. We're close. Actually, that is very close right there. Might go in just a little bit more, just to give a little more of a gap. All right. Now what you do is you shift from the 11th gear up to the 12th gear just to see if it actually gets up in there without actually ramming into it with the upper pulley. As long as that's good, then it should shift through all your gears perfectly. You just want to reinstall this cover on the front. And once again, you kind of go forward into it. And then you want to take your 
little tiny 1.5 millimeter the o-ring and you want to install it there you might have to push it a little tighter get it started by hand to make sure you don't cross thread anything you obviously don't want to over tighten this either since all it's doing is holding that little plastic plate in place so all right it's good to go there now let's run through our gear see if everything shifts fine as long as everything shifts fine we'll be ready to, to ride For watching if you found this beneficial be sure to like and subscribe to the channel i appreciate that and we'll see you in the next video